Hello everyone, my name is Gary. I'm a UK radiology doctor in training. In this video, I'm going to take you through an overview of how I look at and collect stress when reporting emergency department radiographs. As before, we'll go through how those x-rays are taken, quick anatomy recap, suggested checklist, and some examples. You can skip to the section you want from the timeline and I've included a link to Radiopedia to test yourself. So let's start. Radiographic positions in the UK are anterior posterior with 20 degrees internal rotation, also called the motors V, a lateral, and sometimes a straight AP and an additional axial calcaneal view are performed if the previous views were not enough to examine the area of interest. The calcaneal views are taken in a position similar to the one where you stretch your calf muscles with a band. It's a tangential view where the detector is under your heel. On an anterior posterior or a mortis view, you can see the lateral malleolus, tibia and medial malleolus, interosseous membrane, sometimes called the syndesmosis, talus, calcaneum, navicular, cuboid, medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiforms, and metatarsals. On a lateral radiograph, you can see the fibula and lateral malleolus, the distal tibia, and the posterior distal tibia is sometimes called the posterior malleolus, the talus, calcaneum, navicular, cuboid, the cuneiforms, and the metatarsals. On a calcaneal view, you can see the fibula and lateral malleolus, the tibia and medial malleolus, the talus, the anterior medial protrusion of the calcaneum has a special name, which is the sustenaculum. I always look at soft tissue swelling, alignment and bone. If there is soft tissue swelling overlying the medial or lateral malleoli, then this would prompt me to look harder for a fracture. On the AP or motor sphere, there should remain an overlap between the distal tibia and fibula. If this is not present, then this should lead you to question whether the interosseous membrane is torn. Look carefully for an injury of the medial or lateral malleoli. The Weber classification describes three different types of lateral malleolar injury, depending on whether they are distal or proximal, or if they involve the syndesmosis. The ankle motor should be of uniform width all the way around and should measure approximately 4 mm. The surface of the Taylor dome should be smooth, no fractures or osteochondral defects. Draw a line from the highest point posteriorly to the highest midpoint, then a line from the midpoint to the highest point anteriorly. This should be more than 30 degrees, otherwise this indicates a depressed calcaneal fracture. Follow the bones and remember that fractures can look like lucent or sclerotic lines from impaction. Check the distal fibula and tibia with attention to the posterior malleolus, Look for tailor fractures, tailor navicular articulation, base of fifth metatarso, and trace the bones. For the calcaneal view, I follow the edges and look at the trabecular pattern. This radiograph demonstrates an undisplaced fracture of the medial malleolus with no other bony injuries. Notice the significant overlying soft tissue swelling. Here, there is a minimally displaced transverse fracture through the distal fibula epiphysis, in keeping with a Weber A fracture. On this radiograph, there is a spiral fracture of the lateral malleolus, with slight lateral displacement of the distal fractured fragment, in keeping with a Weber B fracture. On this radiograph, there is an oblique fracture of the distal fibula, above the level of distal tibiofibular syndesmosis, in keeping with a Weber C fracture. There is also a complete displaced fracture of the medial malleolus, with anterior displacement. On this radiograph, there is a trimalleolar fracture, medial malleolus, lateral malleolus, and posterior malleolus. This CT demonstrates the trimalleolar fracture as well, medial malleolus, posterior malleolus, and lateral malleolus. On this radiograph, there is no abnormality of the hind foot, however, there is a base of fifth metatarsal avulsion fracture. Remember to trace the bone all the way. This is how an osteochondral defect is like on a 3D model. 
and this radiograph demonstrates a osteochondral fracture of the lateral talar dome. This is how the injury looks like on MRI. This is another case of osteochondral fracture of the talar dome to demonstrate how carefully you need to look for that injury. This is a calcaneal fracture with depressed bowler's angle. This is another case of calcaneal fracture with a depressed bowler's angle. For this case, I'll show you the CT first. There's cortical irregularity in the region of the anterior process of the calcaneum. And that's the radiograph, which again shows the cortical irregularity in the region of the anterior process of calcaneum. Note how subtle the abnormality is. This radiograph demonstrates a communicated Taylor fracture with anterior translation. On this radiograph, the alignment of the ankle mortis is disrupted. Note how there isn't an overlap between the distal tibia and fibula. There is a lateral Taylor shift. There is widening of the tibiofibular syndesmosis, and no fractures can be seen. A proximal X-ray showed the fracture of the proximal fibula called mesonerve fracture. As we saw in the knee tutorial, the tibia and fibula have strong proximal and distal articulation, as if they are one strong ring. A displaced fracture in the ring prompts investigations of the whole ring to make sure that there is no other fractures. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe and follow me on Instagram to get the latest video. And remember, nothing beats practice. So go and click on the link below to see more x-rays and test yourself.